Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a beach. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This beach is made up of multiple small builds, all of which you will be able to find timestamped in the description so you can find them all easily. We have beach huts, an ice cream stand, A hammock, a beach house, a beach bar, a volleyball court, deck chairs. A picnic, a lifeguard chair, surfboards, a mini water slide, sandcastle, and a lighthouse. The beach requires a little bit more preparation than most builds. So first of all, we want to make the grid. This is a 44 wide by 39 long rectangle built into the ground. You can make your beach larger than this, but I would start with these dimensions. Next, we want to make a platform in the upper left hand corner of the grid. Starting one row inwards diagonally, we want to place a row of 23 smooth stone extending right. We then want to extend it forwards by 7 rows, extend all the way over to the left, connect back to where we started, and then fill the centre of it in using smooth stone. After that, we want to come to the back right hand corner of the platform and dig in the ground right of this 12 rows. We then want to dig forwards by 29, and then dig all the way over to the left. and then connect back to the front left hand corner of the platform. This will mark out the area that we want to have sand, so I will remove all of the grass and whatever else and replace it using sand. And now that we have sand, we now want to take the remaining area of the grid, remove it, replace it with water, and my personal recommendation, just because I like this doesn't mean you will, but I really like to place light blue concrete underneath water, it just makes it a lot more vibrant. And this will give us the water portion of the beach, aka the ocean. And then lastly, to make this build separate from 
the rest of the world I am simply just going to add a terracotta wall that extends all the way up the left side of the grid and all the way across the back. Kind of just cutting it off from the rest of the world making the beach its own thing. You of course do not have to do this, you can meld this into its surroundings but for me this is what I think is best. And now that we have completed all of the preparation, we can actually move on to the individual builds that will make up our beach. The first build that I want to add to the beach are beach huts. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make them. I'm going to begin building mine three rows in from the back left hand corner of the smooth stone platform. One, two, three. Start off by placing a row of three red terracotta extending to the right. One, two, three. 3. Extend forwards by 3. 1, 2, 3. Place an oak door to the left, red terracotta to the left, and then extend backwards and connect. We then want to add two additional rows of red terracotta on top of our base, and then place a glass block above the door. We can then add anything that we want into these, but I'm going to add a bed inside of these, a little shelf along the back and a chest above, just like this. But you can literally fill these up with any sort of beach supplies that you might like. We now want to give the beach hut a roof by placing smooth quartz slabs along the top left and right sides of the beach hut, extending these slabs forwards and then inwards and upwards until they eventually connect together like this. We want to do the same on the back, extend them outwards and then inwards until they reach together and then simply place a row of smooth quartz block along the top and then slabs to connect the remaining part of the roof. And there we go, that is a beach arm. I don't just want one however, I want five in total in all different colours and I want to stagger them so that they are not just in one boring row. So the next one is placed in front of and to the right of this, but using the same dimensions, we want to place a yellow terracotta, oak door to the right, yellow terracotta, extend backwards by three, one, two, three, and then across, join back to the front. We now will have to destroy part of this roof so that we are able to place two rows of yellow terracotta on top of the base here a glass block above the door, and then inside of here, just for simplicity's sake, I am going to place the same interior as the other hut, however I will likely change it in the future, and then we want to apply the same roof. So on this exposed side, I want to place the smooth quartz slabs like this, and then extend them forwards, and then left, up, left, up, and then we have to extrapolate from here. We want to place a smooth quartz slab extending forwards as this is where the roof would be, then right and then up. And then we do a similar thing on the back. So extend backwards and then in, up, in, up, and then join down here. And then of course we just place the roof as we want the slabs and the smooth quartz. So as you can see, this is how two of them go together and we have to do this three more times. So the way that I'm going to do it my recommendation would be to position and make the three remaining beach huts, but leave off the roofs. Wait until you have actually built up the walls of the beach hut and added the interiors before adding the roofs. That way, you won't have any waste, you won't have to unnecessarily destroy stuff, and you will end up with the same result.
it does get a little bit tricky to make the roofs when these are all blended together. But as long as you stick to the exact same design by placing the smooth quartz blocks across the middle of the beach hut front to back and have them extend one row across, then that will actually give you something to build off of. So it is a little bit strange. but you will 100% get the hang of it. There we go, beach huts. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make an ice cream stand. I am positioning this three rows inward from the back right hand corner of the smooth stone platform. So one, two, and then on this third block we place a light blue concrete, extend forwards by two, and then left by three, one, two, three. And then we want to place an end rod on this last block, on this corner, and this corner. Then. We want to place a pink wool on top of the first end rod that we placed, extend a white wool to the right, pink and then white, and then we want to extend each one of these blocks backwards by two. We then want to place string in front of these end rods and extend across and connect together. Then we are going to place pink and white carpet on top of the string corresponding with the walls that we have behind. Place cauldrons behind the three front blocks of the light blue concrete and then we are going to place pink, yellow and brown carpet on top of the cauldrons. Place item frames in front of the same light blue concrete blocks that we place cauldrons behind and then also place corresponding concrete powders with the cauldrons that we have behind us as well, the carpets on top of them I should say. Then lastly place a pot and a pointed dripstone on top of the counter space here and then we have three different flavors of ice cream and we have a cone or a pot. Optional extra you can place an item frame on here with a shovel in there and then that is of course to signify that we have a spoon with the pot and that is just a regular cone so. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make a beach house. I am going to position the beach house three rows forward from the back right hand corner of where the sand ends. So one, two, on this third block place a spruce fence, on top of it a spruce plank, right of this we want to place five spruce slabs, one, two, three, four, five, then place a spruce plank and extend this down into the ground using spruce fence. We then want to extend the plank forwards by four using slabs, one, two, three, four, then a spruce plank, which we then want to extend down into the water with vents. We then want to extend the planks to the left by five, one, two, three, four, five, where we will once again place a plank and then place a fence connecting down, then connect back using spruce slabs, fill the center of this in using spruce slabs also. Then on top of the back left hand corner of this platform place three spruce planks. One, two, three. We then want to extend all the way across the back. This is with every single one of these blocks. And then we want to extend forwards by three. So one, two, three, like this, the entire wall. Extend to the left one row, place a couple of spruce doors. We then want to place a row of spruce planks left of the doors, extend across the top to join together, extend the bottom of this to the left, place a glass in the middle, place planks around the glass, and then we want to fill this left wall in using spruce planks as well. We then want to place dark oak slabs along the top of the roof. And then extend two rows forward to overhang the actual building itself. We then want to hang lanterns off of the front corners of the roof like so. And then we are going to place spruce stairs 
First of all, it's actually easier to do this. Replace the two spruce slabs in front of these sta the doors here with upside down spruce stairs. So you'll get the same effect from the top, but what that will then do is allow us to place stairs in front of this and then upside down stairs underneath, stairs in front, and then that will join us into the water. And then lastly, we want to place another set of stairs. This is really difficult to do without dropping a little bit lower. We will just have to replace that. And then we want to have a final set of stairs actually built into the water like this. The end result will look like this. So the purpose of these stairs is to lead down into a closed off swimming area. So whether you want to think of this as a hot tub or just a little mini swimming pool kind of like carved out in the ocean, it's up to you. But the size is also up to you as well. So we are going to place left of these stairs here, one, two, three, four, five spruce trap doors like this and we are going to flip them up and then extending to the right i'm going to place one two three four five spruce trap doors and then flip them all up and then along the side here i'm going to place one two three four five i might not even need this fifth one but we're going to flip these up and then lastly we are going to place a set of trapdoors extending and connecting to the opposite side of the stairs and that's absolutely perfect. So we have a nice little carved out part of the ocean just for our own use. We also want to create a set of stairs leading up to the beach house so we are going to destroy this spruce slab block here and then place an upside down stair in its place and then we are able to place a spruce stair in front of it to the right here, join down to the beach, and then if we just crouch underneath here and place upside down stairs, then that is our way to get up and into the actual house itself. I'm also going to place a little bit of fence just around this balcony area here. And then lastly, we are going to head inside and we are going to begin work on the very small interior. First of all, we want to have a bed on the right side of the house with a Spruce trap door on the wall, flower pot on top, oak sapling, and then I'm going to place a painting behind this. Along this back wall, we are going to have a chest, leaving a gap of one from the bed, and then in this opposite corner, a crafting table, furnace, flower pot on the crafting table, sapling inside, and then a lantern on top of the furnace. Later on, we may decorate the actual house itself with some surfboards and whatever else we make, but for now, the house is 100% complete. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make deck chairs. I am going to position these by lining them up with the door of the yellow beach house and then leaving a gap of one, two in the ground and then on this third block here place an oak stair. In front of the stair an oak slab and then in front of that an oak trap door. Left and right of the oak stairs place an oak sign. We then want to leave a gap of two, so one, two, and then we want to make another chair, so an oak stairs, oak slab in front, trap door in front of that, and then oak signs left and right of the stairs, like so. Those are the chairs themselves, but we can add further detail by placing a spruce fence in between them and a barrel as well extend the fence upwards by one and add your favorite amount of sea pickles to the top of the barrel. I'm going with three. We then want to place string around the edge of the upper spruce fence. We don't have to place them on top of the pickles. And then we simply want to place a checkered pattern of light blue carpet and yellow carpet on top of the string and the fence themselves. And there we have a couple of loungers, a parasol, and some drinks. Here are all of the materials that you will need to make a beach picnic. This can be paired with the loungers or made anywhere along the beach. However, I am positioning this three rows away, one, two, three, from the loungers. So begin by digging a four by four, one, two, three, four, and then we already have the first block, one, two, three, four, square in the sand and then replace the area that you have dug out with a checkered pattern of white concrete powder and red concrete powder. This will make a picnic blanket. 
In the back left hand corner we are going to place a couple of composters next to each other and oak trap doors on top of the composters. This is a basket, you can leave them flipped up or down or one up or one down, it doesn't really matter how you leave it. On the front left hand corner of the blanket we're going to place a jukebox for a stereo or Bluetooth speaker or whatever you want to imagine that that might be. A couple of item frames along the blanket with different things inside of them, so a cake or bread or whatever food stuff you want to add really. And then in the back right hand corner an actual cake and you can leave it half eaten if you want to add a bit of an effect and we are also going to add a couple of pots and that is perfect. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make a beach volleyball court. I am positioning this from the center of this lounger, leaving a gap of three, so one, two, three. We want to destroy this fourth block and then extend it to the left by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We then want to dig across to the right by 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then back, and then connect all the way across to where we first started, and that will give us this rectangle. We then want to cut it in half, up the middle here, and place smooth sandstone inside of the area that we have just cut in half, extending across and creating a solid line. Then we want to place smooth sandstone stairs in the remaining two halves of the rectangle, facing inwards like this, and this is going to give us the outline of the court. Then we want to place end rods on the ends of the row of smooth sandstone, with cobwebs in between the upper pair of end rods, and then we want to place a volleyball. So this is going to be a yellow shulker box surrounded with light blue banners. I personally like to place it roughly in the middle of either one of the sides of the court, and there we go. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make the beach bar. To figure out the placement of the beach bar, I'm going to line up with the back of the personal swimming pool of the beach house, come all the way to the sand, move forwards one, right one, and this is the starting position. Place a stripped oak wood, extend right by three, one, two, three, but also forwards by three, one, two, three, right by three, one, two, three, then place a spruce fence on the front left corner, back left corner, back right corner. We are then going to place a campfire on each one of these blocks and then we are going to fill in a square of a roof just like this. Make sure that the campfires are all facing the same way. And then the easiest way to extinguish them, or at least for me, is to use the splash water bottle. Splash potions actually do come in handy for something. We are also going to place a furnace inside of here with a couple of barrels a brewing stand along the back, a flower part just like this, and then we are going to clan the outside of the bar using spruce trap doors, just flip down like this so we get an interesting texture and we also get two different colors, a different bar top to the outside. We are also going to throw some item frames in front of these barrels with a couple of different potions inside of the item frames. And along the bar top, we'll have like a lantern and we'll have some like sea pickles. We can even have like a pot here and there as well for different kinds of cups. And surrounding the bar, we are just going to have some seats in the form of spruce fence with spruce pressure plate on top. So we're going to position them on the left side as we did the right. You can even draw them in a row closer if you, if you like as well. Could even place one in this corner. I don't know whether that's going to be a little bit too close or not, but there we go, that's, that's looking pretty good so far. Now this falls under the optional extra category. If you want to kind of make it a little bit more green, you can add some leaves to the top of the bar, kind of like this, and hang some vines off of the bar as well, like on both sides. You can even have, uh, have more on the back if you like and kind of hang down, or you can kind of just leave it as it was. It depends if you want to add a little bit more color or whether you're happy as it was. Bar complete. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make a 
hammock. I'm going to place one or two of these in between the beach huts and the beach house. To position the first one, I'm coming all the way to the corner here and extending inwards one, two diagonally. And I'm gonna start off by placing two, one, two jungle wood on top of each other. Then leaving a gap of four going right, one, two, three, four, another couple of jungle wood. In the middle of these, we want to have a bed suspended up in the air like this. Oak sides on the side of the bed, both sides. Then open spruce fence gates against the tree connecting to the bed. And then lastly, we are just going to place some leaves in almost kind of like a little random fashion like this. It almost doesn't matter where they go really, as long as they just look nice and built up like this. And there we have just a nice hanging hammock in between our trees. And of course you can change the color of the hammock if you like as well, so. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make a sandcastle. So to position the sandcastle, I'm going to come all the way to the front right hand corner of the beach and extend inwards diagonally. One, two, three. Here, I'm going to place a sandstone wall, one to the left, back right. So I'm forming a little square. From here, I can add a flag. So this is any sign. I'm using a mangrove sign like this placed diagonally. And then you can give this thing a moat as well, whether you want to fill it in or not is up to you. But dig all the way around this, like so, and then place inwards facing sandstone stairs all the way around the edge, like this. And then you can even choose to fill this in with water. So that's a really cool option, but what you can also do, as we are so close to the beach, we can actually connect this into uh, the actual like beach itself, into the ocean, I should say. So you can even destroy the front two blocks, extend this into the water, and then fill this in with water as well, like the new part of the moat. And anywhere that we've made a mistake, we can just soak that up using sand. And then that looks as though that the waves have like came in and they've kind of like populated the water and it's like running out at the same time. So that's a solid option as well. And I always like to add a bucket and spade to these. So whichever side you want to do it, a pot with an item frame on the ground, golden shovel, and I don't know, I think they just, it, I, I really like this decoration. It's so simple, but awesome. And here are all of the materials that we will need to make a water slide. I am going to position the water slide in the area in between the smooth stone platform and the hammock. So I'm not being too specific, right about here will do I think. So start off by placing a couple of red concrete on top of each other and then leave a gap of one going left and place a couple more red concrete. We want to dig these into the ground like so and remove the sand in between. We then want to remove the sand behind and place a light blue concrete, which we are then going to extend up by two, one, two. And then behind this, we want to row three, one, two, three. And then either side of this light blue concrete here, we are going to stick a red concrete, just like so. Extend the red concretes up, back, stick an oak fence on the ends of them, and then extend them all the way down to the ground, like this. Then we're going to add some ladders to the back here, climb up onto the water slide like so, stick a water here, and then if we jump in, this will lead us directly into the ocean. It all flows nice together. It's just a fun little thing to add to the beach. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make surfboards slash beach towels. So the positioning for the surfboards are really simple. I'm roughly lining up with the light blue terracotta beach house, the left and right side of it. And I want to find the one to third block here, extending up the beach from the shore, stack a couple of birch trap doors on top of each other, flip top and apply a banner. Now in front of these, I'm going to place some beach towels in the form of a white carpet and then a contrasting carpet as well. So since this is red, we'll go with light blue. So beach towel, with a surfboard directly behind in the sand, leave a gap of one. I'm going to use all of the opposite materials for this one because I just think that these look better together. And there we go, that's perfect. So a couple of surfboards, a couple of beach towels, fantastic. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make the lifeguard chair. I want to position the lifeguard chair somewhere in between the surfboards and the water slides are roughly in the middle here, and then extending back somewhere in between the ocean and the volleyball court. So roughly speaking, about here. 
I want to place a spruce trapdoor on the ground, flip it up, and then place a spruce stair on top of it. Then we want to place a spruce sign in front of the trapdoor, to the left of and to the right of the stair, and then up the back a couple of ladders. And then extending out of the back right corner, an oak fence, a couple of end rods on top. We then want to place a white carpet on top of the end rods, place string surrounding the upper end rod all the way around in a square just like this. And then we are going to have a checkered pattern of white and red carpet just like this. We're just going to have to turn that center carpet red. There we go. And there we have a lifeguard chair. Nice and easy. Here are all of the materials that we will need to make the lighthouse. I am going to position the lighthouse diagonally from the end of this wall here. I'm going to leave a gap of one diagonally and then place a white concrete. Extend forwards two, one, two, right two, one, two, forwards two, one, two, and then right back together. Then I'm going to place the door here on the front and I'm going to add another row of white concrete all the way around. Then add a row of red terracotta all the way around, white concrete all the way around, red terracotta all the way around, white concrete all the way around, and then place an okra frog light in the center of the lighthouse, extend it up, place glass pane surrounding the frog light, then a mangrove plank on top of the frog light and mangrove stairs surrounding the plank circularly like this. Once the lighthouse itself has been complete, we are now going to build up around it using stone slabs. We will first of all start with a layer of stone just around in a ring. And we are just then going to build up around it to make it look a little bit rocky. We will want to have some slabs built into the actual ocean as well. Maybe a little bit next to the lighthouse door. Nothing too crazy, something like that will look great. Some small additional details that you can add to the beach include adding stairs to the smooth stone platform that we have at the back of the beach on the left and right sides and add some iron bars in between. Adding surfboards outside of the beach house. Adding a boat or two into the water. Adding surfboards into the water as well. These are birch trap doors flipped down and then you place carpet on top of them. You can even add some floaties into the ocean as well. Simply connect four glass pane together in the water, use different colors if you like, and you can even stick a mop head on the corner of the floaty as well, if you so choose. And that is the end of this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. On this rare occasion, I do not have a plan on where to move the beach into the city. So, we are going to keep it exactly where it is. I have built some infrastructure around it. We have a road that leads to the beach and we have a small car park and a pathway. But other than that, we are going to leave it as it is. And in a future episode, we are going to have to make some changes to the city and further refine the layout. But for now, I think that this is a great place for it. We're gonna have to find a new place to make tutorials, but that's okay. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Good. Bye.